with director Colin Trevorrow having recently revealed that Isla Sauna will see some sort of resolution in Jurassic World Dominion, we thought we'd compile everything that we currently know about the status of the island and what Colin's tease might just mean. So what happened to Isla Sauna? We were first introduced to Isla Sauna in 1997's The Lost World Jurassic Park, where InGen's founder John Hammond revealed to Ian Malcolm that InGen had a second island codenamed Site B that bred and housed the dinosaurs before they were moved to the park on Isla Nublar. Isla Sauna is located in the Pacific Ocean 207 miles west of Costa Rica and 87 miles southwest of Isla Nublar. It is the largest island in a chain of islands known as Las Cinco Muertes, the Five Deaths. After the Jurassic Park incident in 1993, Hurricane Clarissa wiped out facilities on the island, forcing workers to evacuate and abandon the island and the dinosaurs. When we see Isla Sauna in The Lost World though, which takes place roughly four years after the hurricane, the dinosaurs are thriving. Despite the lysine contingency that should have killed them, it appears that life did indeed find a way, and there are many dinosaur species now living on the island in their own social groups. John Hammond states that he's been able to keep the island safe from human interference for the last few years. Sauna's look is a stark contrast to the jungle seen on Isla Nublar, giving Sight B a more prehistoric and primitive look. The filmmakers chose to film a lot of the movie in the redwoods in California, and due to the abandonment of the island, the buildings and facilities are severely dilapidated and have succumbed to the jungles that surround them. Isla Sauna is considerably larger than Isla Nublar, and Hammond gives us a close look at the island through a satellite map that he shows Malcolm in the beginning of the movie. Hammond initially states that most of the carnivores are located near the interior of the island and wants the team to stay on the outer rim for safety. Across the island, the dinosaurs have staked out their own personal territories. After the San Diego incident, which ends the Lost World, the public are now aware of this second island and this gave confirmation that the rumours surrounding Jurassic Park were actually true and that dinosaurs are still alive. Sauna's importance and what InGen had built was vastly expanded upon in the 1998 video game Trespasser, but while rich in lore, this game is not considered canon. It's definitely worth exploring on your own though. Jurassic Park 3 opens with a restricted title card that emphasises to us that Isla Sauna is now closed off from the public eye, although there seems to be no direct security that monitors the island. The Dinosaur Company, which is an illegal parasailing operation, has taken advantage of the public's continuing interest in real-life dinosaurs, which is how Eric Kirby becomes stranded there. I'm gonna get you close, my friend, but not too close, eh? You don't wanna be eaten! <laughs> Jurassic Park 3 shows a different look to Isla Sauna, swapping the redwoods for a more lush and tropical-looking jungle, similar to that seen in Jurassic Park. Some explanations maintain that this is due to Sauna having more than one type of ecosystem on the island and that the third movie takes place on a different section of the island to the Lost World, but from a filmmaking standpoint, this was more likely just a stylistic choice by the art director and the producers of Jurassic Park 3. While the movie doesn't provide much detail as to whether or not InGen had returned to the island since 97, Alan Grant does suggest that InGen had been keeping secrets and hadn't disclosed all of what they had been up to. I don't remember that on InGen's list. It's because it wasn't on their list and it makes you wonder what else they were up to. The movie also shows us a fairly detailed look at one of InGen's genetic labs which houses multiple dinosaur fetuses and eggs but does not provide any concrete explanation or information on what exactly was happening. Now this is where information gets a little muddled. The viral marketing campaign for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom does give some insight into Isla Sauna and what happened to the island after 2001, and in some cases before it. Masrani acquired InGen in 1998, shortly after John Hammond's passing. No less than 100 days after their purchase, new dinosaur species were bred on Sauna and experimented on over a period of 9 months. The species included were the new dinosaurs that we see in JP3, the Ankylosaurus, the Ceratosaurus, the Corythosaurus and the Spinosaurus. The breeding was all done quickly and only a select few InGen employees were involved and had their names removed from the official documentation. It was unclear whether Simon Mizrani himself knew about the violation of law, but Dr. Wu was there, as confirmed in leaked emails on the Dinosaur Protection Group website. The research and growth of these animals were filed under Early Research and Development for Jurassic Park's second incarnation, and simultaneously, amalgam testing. The website states, 
A number of these new animals had originally been reported by the survivors of the plane crash on Isla Sorna during the summer of 2001, but the information was quickly buried by bribed officials. At the end of Jurassic Park 3, Pteranodons escaped the island. The original 2004 John Sayles script opened with a sequence showing these flying reptiles approaching land and attacking children and parents at a Little League baseball game, and the escaped pterosaurs were also central to the storyline of the Jurassic Park Adventures book Flyers and the IDW comic book Jurassic Park Devils in the Desert. However, continuing this plot point from the ending of JP3 wasn't something that happened in Jurassic World, and instead, the Mizrani Global Viral website tries to fill in the gaps, saying that Vic Hoskins led the flying reptile cleanup in Canada, which brought him onto Simon Mizrani's radar. Simon Mizrani then put Hoskins in charge of the expanded private mercenary sector of InGen. While many fans would like to believe that Isla Sauna was abandoned after 1997 and left alone, aside from what happens in Jurassic Park 3, information from the Dinosaur Protection Group viral site in 2018 revealed that Masrani Global took ownership and set up facilities on Site B in 1998 and had their own plans for that island very early on. The website states, Mizrani had been passionate about wanting the best for the park's animals, honouring his vow to InGen founder John Hammond to help them live safely and in peace. But after the world learned of their existence, and rumours of poaching vessels were spotted around Isla's Nublar and Sauna, Mizrani sought to bring Hammond's lost dream to life. It continues by detailing how after the breeding of these new animals on Sauna and in secret by Dr. Wu, there was a mystifying drop in population, with some paleontologists claiming it was the result of territorial disputes and animal behaviour, with others stating it was a disease that had caused it. The true cause was that the illegally cloned dinosaurs had a profound impact on the ecosystem, suggesting the Spinosaurus completely disrupted all of the other dinosaurs on the island. On the Maserani Global website, in the Terminal Pages Archive section, there is an email from Dr. Wu, dated 2003, entitled Ruffled Feathers, where he discusses that the reason most of the dinosaurs are stuck with scales is due to the filling of the gaps in the gene sequence. Wu then states that perhaps his research into gene splicing will perhaps solve the problem, and that it certainly proved its limitless capabilities with that accident we left on Isla Sauna, which is presumably referring to the Spinosaurus. <laughs> The island does play a relatively important role in the tie-in novel by Tess Sharp, The Evolution of Claire, which takes place roughly a year before Jurassic World opens. In the book, the Bright Minds interns, which includes a young Claire Deering, are told that there will be a transfer of a Velociraptor from Sauna to Nublar. The book's front cover shows a male Velociraptor from Jurassic Park 3, and while the appearance is not described in the book in detail, we can assume that this was the species that had been transferred. It was then said to have been euthanized after it killed one of the interns. On the Dinosaur Protection Group site, it states that in 2004, Simon Mizrani had the surviving animals move to Isla Nublar during the park's construction, leaving Site B abandoned and restricted. The way in which Jurassic World was announced to the public is also revealed in the novel, detailing how Simon Mizrani sent anonymous packages containing paleontological paraphernalia to journalists, actors, pop stars, professors, and social media influencers, despite there being no real social media at the time except for maybe MySpace. In a clear example of having others do the marketing for you, recipients began uploading videos to YouTube, a platform that didn't launch until early 2005, months before the park's opening. Isla Sauna has actually only been mentioned once in the new film so far, and that's when Eli Mills states that before the islands, before Sauna, Jurassic Park, all of it, Hammond and Lockwood built a custom lab in the sub-basement, extracted the first DNA from amber right beneath our feet. Now that line wasn't actually in the script and it wasn't recorded on set, it was added via dubbing in post, so read into that what you will. Mizrani Global taking control of InGen and the islands would likely have made the news, it would have at least been public knowledge, but in the college scene in Jurassic Park 3, a student states, once the government decides how to handle that second island, scientists will just go in and look for themselves, indicating that the public are still unaware of Mizrani's purchase. This could purely be because Mizrani Global kept their deal secret from the public, but there is reason to doubt the DPG documentation, and it's important to remember that the films themselves can retcon some of this information if they need Isla Sauna to be populated with dinosaurs for whatever reason. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't be the first time. All you know right, you Please. stay out of it. And now we have this picture, teased from the set by Colin Trevorrow himself. What does this tell us? 
Well, it shows a 90s era genetics lab with a large crate, the same one that we see in Jurassic World minus the modern technology. The crate was also spotted in the background in Fallen Kingdom with a smaller InGen logo on the front. On this new crate, the words Isla, Sauna and Site B are labelled across the front. It's safe to say that Jurassic World Dominion will give audiences some sort of resolution for Isla Sauna, and while I don't personally believe we'll be visiting the island again, a flashback sequence may give us more insight. The New York Times also released two new images, one showing what looks like a very Isla Sauna inspired location. Now there's no confirmation that this image, despite its strikingly similar look to the Lost World, is actually the island itself, and it's more likely that this is in California or somewhere on the mainland, perhaps close to Lockwood's Manor, although again, we have no real confirmation on where this image is. The location was no doubt designed to give Dominion a larger variety in locations and visuals. So that is what happened to Isla Sauna. Hopefully we will learn more about Site B in Dominion and future projects in the franchise. The island certainly holds a lot of mystery that would be very exciting to explore. What are your hopes for Isla Sauna and do you think we will return to the island in Jurassic World Dominion? Do let us know in the comments section down below and if you like this video, please give it a like and give it a share. We have now opened the Jurassic Outpost store. We're selling Jurassic themed shirts, mugs, masks, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Check it out for some funky merchandise and check the description for links to Zavi. If you used Outpost 20 at checkout on both the Primal and Festival clothing collections, you can get 20% discount off your order. And you can also use Outpost 10 site-wide for 10% off your order. As always, head to JurassicOutpost.com for more news and information.